like saying they're all just a little bit different so um, while I'm sealing this I'm just trying to get the top of this to be totally waxed totally sealed going around it not to get too much wax on my table and you know I'm just going around it still and this is gonna take probably you know just take aside 20 30 minutes have an hour you know whatever you have it's again this is a really simple easy ritual and you're going to have this probably for a really long time so put some thought into it I'm just rushing it because this is just a tutorial video so, you know, you just go around and seal it with the green wax. And while you're doing this, you're thinking about all the things you're trying to manifest related to money and wealth and prosperity and abundance. And, and you know, realize that you're sealing this. This is done. You're sending this out to the universe. This is another great way of letting go of your intentions as well because you're sealing it. This is it. You're putting it out there. And that's another reason why you should be kind of vague with your request. You know, like, I am wealthy instead of, you know, like, I'm a millionaire. Because your idea of wealth is different than everyone else's. Um, but also, the whole being specific comes into it as well. It's almost done. You just basically want, like, the entire jar to be covered with wax. And again, we're sealing this. So, this is um, kind of going to be like, almost like a battery for your intentions. I, I think of them as like energetic batteries. This one, um, for example, I keep on my altar and I will again show you what I like to do with them after they're done. Going around it. It's almost done. And okay. So I'm just gonna blow a note, just a chime candle. And so, you know, I like to let this thing burn all the way down. Eventually it'll cover the whole thing. Um, so after that's done, let's pretend that happened. You can either seal it with the green wax that's on there already, or you can use the seal candle and just let it get enough wax in there so you can put your seal on it and again sealing it is kind of like your energetic signature saying that this is done so would it be let's see if it will let me do it I'm going to let that set. Hopefully it'll work. And again, this would be sitting on top all the way gone at this point. But for time purposes, it's, I'm just taking it off. And so while that's drying, as you can see, it's sealed with wax. And in here I have my own special ingredients um, and mementos. <clears throat> you can put change, lottery tickets, bay leaves. I know you can see the bay leaf. I wrote the word wealth on it. You can put lottery tickets, you can put um, cemetery dirt, for example. I use cemetery dirt in my, my own rituals a lot because I actually own my own grave. I have my own grave with my own tombstone, my own name, um, a family plot, family cemetery that's very deeply connected to me. And by putting cemetery dirt from my personal grave in it, again, that makes it really unique in that energy of my life, um, from life until death, you know, that, that force. <clears throat> that energy, that intention, um, that dedication is in that jar. So that's really personal to me. That's something I like to do, but most people don't have their own grave. <laughs> um, a lot of people think that graveyard dirt is used for hexes and curses and death and stuff, and you can use it for those. That's that's definitely true. But my intuition has always led me to do things um, in a really unique way, um, and that I always find confirmation for it later on in my readings. Um, but you can put pine cones in here. Um, you know, there's tons of herbs and stuff in here. So as you can see on the top, there's a seal. It's a golden seal of a pentagram. And then again, you have the wax all the way around it. 
and um, that's pretty much it from making it again just make sure that this is it when you seal it it's done so put this on your altar or somewhere safe and sacred put it on a, a shelf I mean it looks pretty cool and it has such incredible energy I mean you made this you created this you put all of your intentions and your your wishes and your hopes and everything inside this jar um, so something I like to do is when I need money quick or or if I need you know that kind of boost when it comes to bringing wealth into my life or money into my life really quickly I like to shake it um, so I go to my altar and I think about the thing I want maybe it's like some bill that's huge and needs to be paid quickly or, or whatever it is I just take this and I shake it and I just keep thinking about the thing I want shake 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 thinking and while you're thinking you're like you're really moving the energy in your body your blood's flowing it, it does something to activate the energy inside of you and connect you to your intentions. Um, and I just stand there, I shake it, and I think really hard about the thing I want, and then I put it down, and then I go on my way. Um, so, you know, again, money jars are meant to be kept forever. You can bury them, you can destroy them. I don't like to bury things and litter and stuff like that um, unless the component is organic and can naturally go back into the earth glass. I mean, that's going to be around a while. It's kind of dangerous. So try not to bury these. Um, try to be smart about it. You can always empty them out and destroy them if you really had to for some strange reason. You know, you had to get rid of it. But And I remember when you're making these, you're going to have this for a long time. Um, so, you know, make it unique, make it your own, you know, make it into a container that suits your lifestyle. I have, you don't have to use jar, um, big jars like this. You could use something small, like they have cute little jars at the craft store that you can get in different colors. So be on the lookout for, you know, antique shops, crafts, supply places, anywhere that has cute little jars. And I mean, you can use these and no one has any idea what's in them if you're, you're worried about someone knowing. Um, you don't have to seal it. You can just have a jar just like this, like just a cute little jar or a container of some kind with the hexes I have. Oh, I don't think I have it with me. It's on the floor. Um, but you can get any kind of container, whether it's conspicuous or not, um, with your intentions inside of it. Just make sure that it's somewhere sacred and safe. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. One other thing you can do is you can actually burn your intentions and you can put them... Uh, the ashes of it either you can use it in the dressing of the candle or you can put it inside so that's another thing that I've done um, that I like to do so let me just get a piece of paper really quickly I'm gonna teach you how to burn things safely too well so what you can do also is you can put your intentions inside there and you know seal it up and while you're you're focusing on it um, before you seal it and everything, you can go ahead and take another copy of your intentions, a second copy, or your original copy. You don't have to put the whole thing in the jar if you want it to be, uh, if you want it to be, you know, really sacred and you don't want anybody to ever find your jar. Um, what you can do is burn your intentions and put it in the jar so no one can ever see it, or you can do two copies. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to, you know, read out loud your intentions. Um, I'm using... 70 proof isopropanol alcohol. It's really awesome to burn. It's a nice clean burn. And I have an iron cauldron. This is a safe container to be burning things in. So you're just gonna focus on your intentions. You can repeat what you wrote while you're focusing on the flame. You know, obviously use fire safety when you do this. Don't set your house on fire. Don't set yourself on fire. Be really careful. Always have something next to you that you can put the fire out with. I have to say this because people eat Tide Pods. So, um, so you're burning your intention, and again, this can be your original intention that you didn't want to put in here, or a second copy of what you've written. And you know, once it's all burned and everything, I'm just gonna stir it around. And you can even use some fire divination at this point. You can focus on the flames, see what comes up in your subconscious, see what comes up in the flames. You can ask the flames questions. You can ask the flames, you know, and it'll answer you. For example, um, a yes for me is when the fire swirls in almost like a tornado or a hurricane kind of emotion. I'll ask a question and then the yes will be a swirl. Um, so, you know, if you don't know anything about fire divination, 
Again, that's another form of divination that's a you know a bit unique. It's it's up for interpretation um, with whoever does it. Uh, you can definitely do that while your intention is burning in the, the cauldron or the fire safe container. Uh, that's another thing that you can add to this, which I love doing. I love fire divination. So that's just going to burn out. And then at the end of it, you'll have ashes. And you can take the ashes and you can put them in the jar before you seal it. Or you can use the ashes along with the herbs and dress your candle for the top. That's another option. Make this your own. Follow your intuition. Follow your gut feelings. Use items that are personal to you. You can use, you know, green candles. You can use gold candles. Um, just anything that feels like wealth and money to you. Old jewelry, new jewelry. You can have an altar or area set up dedicated to wealth and prosperity and abundance. Um, you can have different deities dedicated to it. I like Fortuna and Thoth. They're my two favorite ones because knowledge brings money. Um, Thoth is incredible. If you've ever read uh, the Kabbalion, um, it's a great book. There are hermetic principles, incredible, incredible stuff about law of attraction, deep ancient knowledge. Um, so, you know, whatever is you are into, whatever you feel drawn to, whatever you worship, you know, bring it together, make a space for it, make some time for it. It's super easy. And it's actually kind of fun. And it's, and it's really cool. Because, you know, you'll, what happened to me is when I first started out, I was going to the cupboard and stealing my husband's herbs and stuff. And I was using things like clove and ginger and cinnamon and money ritual spells. And I thought, what? Like, I mean, he has a whole cupboard full of herbs and stuff. Why am I attracted to these and then I started doing research on the items that I was grabbing this is before I knew it was a witch by the way and um I was just sort of blown away by the fact that I was using herbs that are meant to attract money and I just thought that was the most incredible thing and that's one of the things that I knew um that I was definitely meant to be a witch is because I just so naturally followed my intuition and was guided to do things that people had written books on um, so that was super interesting. Another thing you can do, by the way, is you can take your, your yellow, uh, or golden flowers, roses, uh, your green flowers, whatever, and you can put, you know, rose petals on top and you can seal them in with the wax or you can let them dry and then seal them later. You can put them inside. Just another option. My deities, um, person, one of my deities, um, personally likes red roses. So I always have fresh roses at my altar anyways, and I just happen to get some gold ones in with my, my normal ones. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can always, you know, sage the items too, by the way, before you go in, you can, you can say things like, um, I'm cleansing my, my financial life of all negativity or blockages. Uh, I release, you know, you can do things like that. You can do, do you know, a bit of incorporation of, uh, you know, a cleansing ritual at the beginning of it. Um, yeah, just again, you know, make it your own, do whatever feels right to you and, uh, just follow your instincts. That's my, my best advice, but this is really simple and I hope you guys try it and I'm sorry it took me so long to make this, <laughs> but I finally did. Um, so yeah, if you guys have anything that you do personally or that you, you want to do or whatever, you know, feel free to leave a comment or you know have any questions just message me I have instructions that um, I saved from a long time ago in my email so if you guys really needed written instructions for some reason just let me know I have them saved somewhere um, but yeah so there's a lot of different spices and herbs and, and different things you can use for this these are the ones I use but there's a lot more um, so you know do your research buy some books on it read some articles watch some videos and play around with it this is just it's practice witchcraft is reading research practice reading research practice reading research practice just over and over for years and years until you start to see things you know work um and you just kind of get into the flow of it you start listening to your intuition and letting it guide you and you start seeing things happen you know it's just an apple witchcraft is an apple amplification I can't talk um, of the law of attraction so this is just the law of attraction kind of on steroids and again this is about level two of witchcraft um, you know that's just in my opinion because things are a little bit more detailed than um, 
than you know just writing things on paper and burning them this is some next level stuff um so i hope you guys liked the video um and that i'll be making more so stay tuned take care guys bye